Heavy Metal Rock. Global Mind. I'm Robert Cavuto of My Global Mind, and today we're speaking with Kurt Newman of the Bodines for the latest album for the last time that's coming out on June 24th. Welcome, Kurt, and thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. I truly appreciate it. Hey, thanks for having me on your show. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to talk about the new release. Yeah, it's what a great Amer- what a great slice of Americana of this album is. So congratulations to you on that. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah, really good. You know, any of the songs on this album could have made a great album title. Um, what yeah. was it about the, for the last time that made the cut to be the title? Well, it was such a provocative uh, title for our record because we've we've been around a long time. We've put out a lot of records. So um, I love the song for the last time. A lot of people, in fact, it had been in the Netflix show where a lot of people around the world were looking for, they would email us like, where can I get this song? So a lot of people seem to like that song for one. Um, but for two, I thought it was so provocative. Everybody's going to say, what do you mean for the last time? Is this the last time? And I like that in a title that at least people are talking about it. And my answer is, I don't, I, who knows when it's the last time? I don't know, but we, we don't have anything planned to end anything right now, but, uh, you never know. So it made a good title. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. That's a great answer. Um, let's see, the lyrics come across as very personal on this album particularly yeah. uh, anybody but you. Is that the case when you're writing, that they're very personal lyrics? Yeah, I mean, I think that's all you can do is is draw on your personal um, experience when you're any kind of like musician, artist. Um, I think you have to draw on, you know, um, like myself, a lot of artists wrestle with things like depression in life and music was the, the vehicle that could help lift you out of those things. Um, so you need to use those things, I think, in your art, your music, and um, same with happy and sad times, you know, they're, they're there for a reason and they can be used as lessons for yourself, but for other people too. And we all identify with it. So to me, that's the point of songs and songwriting is that we're singing about happy, sad, good, bad experiences, and we're, we're, we're singing together to heal or to celebrate those things that we've gone through or overcome, and uh, it makes us feel better, and, and that's, that's what the purpose of music, I think, is, is for, is to help us heal and celebrate and go on. Yeah, I agree. That um, music got me through the pandemic, you know, it was always there for me, I was enjoying it, and yeah. it kept me sane. <laughs> Yeah, and, and my whole life, I mean, a lot of kids, you know, their high school years can be really tough and dark and kids tend to go through a really tough time in that 15 to 20 age there um, where they're wrestling with all kinds of stuff and music for me and many people was it was a big part of that, you know, that that they found some identity um, to hold on to or they, some connection that helped them and so um Music is pretty important in our culture, and um, that's why that's why I do it. You know, I just feel that connection to it. No, I agree. My favorite track was um, "Come a Long Way." Um, where did you pull the inspiration for that song? Uh, my wife and I have been through a lot together, <laughs> and um, anyone knows who has a family and kids and the struggles of everyday life and what you get through. And some people have really big ones and others have just the normal ones, which are hard enough. And um, I just kind of felt that I wanted to express that in this song, like that we've come a long way together. And that's, it's really something to behold, something that's important. I think uh, often in relationships, you can lose sight of that, you know, and you start to doubt each other if, if if you're not paying attention. And um, so I was just kind of drawing a reference to that, of the importance of that. We, we've gone through this and that's an important thing and, and we have this together. And um, 
you have that to go yet too, you know, you have your future of tomorrow and tomorrow. And so it was just kind of honoring that, that idea. Yeah. I, I think that's great. I, I related it to my daughter. She just graduated high school. Um, yeah, that too. Right. And we've come a long way, you know, to get her through grammar school and studying and all the sports and everything. And now she's going off and she's leaving us and uh, it's bittersweet, you know? So it yes, sucks. I, I took it to sucks. I hate it. I hate my kids growing up. I was just like, how you could do. you do this? <laughs> yeah. I was like, she, where's the little girl I used to walk into like, you know, first and second grade and now she's going off. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it's really hard. hard. Yeah. And so songs like that are singing to that, that idea. It goes so fast, but you've yeah. come all this great distance together and you've been through so much life together. Well, that one hit me hard as I've been listening to it, you know, through the weekend. So, yeah. Um, just a little more time sounds like very simplistic advice that I would give even to my daughter. Things are going to work itself out. Was that the narrative of that song? Well, the biggest narrative for a little more time um, for me was it when I started, just I stumbled onto that chorus of the song and it reminded me of Tom Petty so much that mm -hmm. a song he might have sang in the late 70s kind of era when he was putting out music and it had that kind of rock, but his his type of melodies and i i literally started singing it like him when i was <laughs> because it reminded me so much of that era but yeah like tom's songs they they had this basic simple message this basic truth that we all could sing to and and relate to and so it is it is a simple thing and it is a good approach to life you know sometimes wherever you are now that is absolutely going to change whether you're in a good place or a bad place, the one thing you can count on is that will change with a little more time. So you always have to remember that. Uh, no, that's great advice. And that's, I, I always say it and I remember it. Um, you, you spoke about Tom Petty and a uh, press release talked that I'm a mess was a tribute in part to Tom Petty, but I thought musically the second track, you got to get crazy, had a yeah. real strong Petty vibe. Um, once it got in your head, what, what was going through your head when you were writing that? Was that a Tom Petty influence also? Well, I'm sure Tom Petty has influenced a lot of my music. I just grew up listening to him for, for so many years that uh, it's got to be there in the music. There's no way for me to avoid it. But um, the biggest influence of that song was about just what I'm saying. Like, you know, we've, we have so much kind of dark times going on and, you know, politics sucks and war and all these things going on inflation and like we were talking about in a family your everyday life of bills and work and struggle and kids and stuff it's like the feeling was like sometimes you can't solve all the problems and there is no good solution to it so you just got to go a little crazy our philosophy was, you know, my family was just like you go and do something fun sometimes because there's just no way to solve the problem so the idea on that song was just that like sometimes you gotta go crazy it was like you you can't necessarily get on a g5 and go to maui even though it might sound like a blast but you can do some things that are crazy and fun and so that's what that song is supposed to be it's just supposed to be one of those songs you get in the car and turn it up on the radio and you sing it out loud and you have a good time yeah i think that's going to be my sentiment for the summer before my daughter leaves so i think this is going to be my my go-to album for the summer because it hits all of those things. And yes, I was exactly thinking that we have to spend as much time as humanly possible. We have to go to the beach. We have to go enjoy every minute while we're together before she goes off. And, and the first song, the first song on the record as well is, is like about 20 years old. I wrote that for my daughters when they were very young. Wow. Um, because it wasn't until having those young kids that I realized more about my childhood and what my childhood was like. And, and I used to, talk about it as if it was normal somehow but then my wife would be like well you wouldn't do that to your kids would you and I'd be like no of course not I wouldn't do that to my kids and then you start to realize how your childhood may not have been as normal as you thought but <laughs> in thinking about that stuff I wrote this song like that I wanted them to know that they were not going to be left alone you know that they were going to know somebody cared about them and so that's an old song and it's been sitting around a long time. I just wanted to get it out finally for them so that they could always have that out there. No, that's great. I, times have definitely changed since we were kids, you know, with social media alone. And, you know, uh -huh. we used, I thought we had a blast growing up. I thought it was fun and I yeah. wouldn't remember it for my daughter. <laughs>
Yeah. No, I heard a comic one day saying that it made a lot of sense. He's like, when we were kids, the only parental advice we would get is we would be saying we're going off swimming and our parents would say, don't drown. <laughs> you know, that was like the parental. Now you would never do that. You'd never like the kid's going to walk two miles to go swimming yeah. somewhere. It's like you wouldn't let it happen. But in our childhood, it was normal to like, don't drown. Okay. Or even going for a bike ride come back, come back for dinner. And you just, you didn't have a watch. You didn't have a phone. You just instinctively knew yep. time of the day. I got to come back on my bike and I got to leave the appropriate amount of time. Just my father's going to come home at five 30 and that's what time we eat. It was, just, they opened the door and they let us go. And you know, yeah. nowadays, you know, not, know what not the are. same anymore. No, <laughs> it's very different now. And, but, but a lot of this record had to do with, like I said, about, family life because I thought a lot of people could identify with totally. with that the struggles of everyday life of children and work and bills and what you what you get through each day yeah after speaking with you today now it comes more apparent this album I'm, I'm going to enjoy it more um yeah. is there a particular way you like to start writing a song does it start with a melody start with lyrics start with a riff usually um I'll just be messing around on a guitar or a piano and something will kind of strike me but um <clears throat> and that's the way it happened on a lot of this record but uh i also did this show for netflix called the ranch where they were giving me subject matter for all those years i was writing songs for the show and so um some of the songs you know were that way and in fact for the last time was about that one of the songs i wrote for the show too and it was about that just kind of like heartbreak and despair and but i would get fed those a lot of subject matters from them and and that was new for me to be able to write songs that way and i found it really refreshing to say okay i'm writing about small town america today and i would go down and think about my life growing up in waukesha and and what it was really like and the people around me and stuff and so um I enjoyed that. It was nice to have subject matter kind of fed to you to, to write about. That's fascinating. How about, um, what's the hardest part of a song to write? Um, the hardest part, hmm. I don't know. I couldn't say there was just one. It, <laughs> well, for me, you know, I have a process, you know, I, I when I've come across an idea, I kind of like, I then try to make it into a song, which requires you to, you know, get to a certain baseline where things flow right, you know, and it's complete. And, and so I need to, that has to work before you can do anything for me. Yeah. Um, I need to get it to, to, to work as a complete thing. And I need to see it all in my head first, kind of working as a complete thing. Wow. Before and you then go, you know, I, I'm just talking about like arrangement and, and tempo and key and stuff like that, that it all works together. Um, wow. Otherwise you can get a really interesting idea, but it may not ever be anything more than an idea, you know? Okay. No, oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. um, we, we talked a lot about your lyrics. We talked a lot about the songs. How would you describe yourself as a lyricist? Um, I never thought of myself as a real, like, um, you know, Bob Dylan lyricist. Mm -hmm. And I never strive to be. Like, I think a lot of songwriters really do strive to be that. Um, my problem was I grew up as a drummer and I really liked listening to songs for their production and stuff as a kid. And I, I was listening to that first before I was listening to the words. So I'm one of those kids who sang the wrong words to song <laughs> all the time because I didn't listen as closely as other kids probably did. And so for me, the song has to have a basic general positive feeling to it, to, you know, in some way, even when it's a sad song, it has to make you feel good somehow. And, and um, I try to achieve that lyrically and musically and that it all works together, but I don't try to be like what an amazing lyricist this guy was. Oh my God, I, I want it all to work together. And that's all I really care about is that it's working together. And I've always concentrated on simplicity in songwriting. And uh, I think the most universal songs are, are simple and easy to sing and fun to sing. And so mm -hmm. I like songs that work that way.
No, that's great. Great response. You talked about, you know, you composing these songs in your head. Are, do you have a lot of songs going on in your head at all the time and it's hard to get out? Yeah, no, I, <laughs> I, I, put, I put songs down, you know, ideas down on the phone and stuff like all the time, but I, I rarely even ever get to them. So there's probably a thousand ideas sitting there that I've never gotten to. Um, but yeah, they, they've always come really quickly to me somehow and it's just a matter of if something lasts long enough or i'm in a place long enough where i can really flush it out or not no that's, that's tough you, you've lived a fascinating career um you had that hit closer to free yeah and um you could have ridden that for decades but instead you chose a different avenue continue creating writing new music tell me about that approach of never giving up well it's just kind of uh it's, it's what happens in my, you know, I, I write songs and um, you want to get them out to people. So in the most basic way, I guess that's what's going on is, is the songs are still there. They're still coming out. I still enjoy the process of doing it. So um, I'm doing it <clears throat> kind of for me, I guess, in that regard. But um, when the songs do get out there, people tend to, tell you these incredible stories how it helped them somehow in their life you know we get i've had many many people talk to me about getting through cancer or diseases or really difficult times or the loss of a child or just terrible terrible things that they, they say your music helped me and so i that's another reason i like to keep doing it because um it's kind of the best paycheck you're going to get out of your music, even though it would be great to be, you know, super wealthy. Um, the most fulfilling thing is when you hear a story like that, that your yeah. music actually served a purpose somewhere out there that was bigger than a dollar, you know? And so that's part of the fuel too. I figure this music is coming through me for a reason and it's important for me to kind of just keep doing it. And, and I enjoy it. No, that's great. Uh, great time. Any song come to you as a gift? I mean, they're always swirling in your head, it sounds like, but is there anything that's just like the lyrics or that just came right to you like a bolt of lightning? Yeah, many, many songs, you know, um, have come to me. You know, when I wrote the song Good Things, even, it was just, it was just there. And um, many songs are like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I heard once somebody describe, was it, I uh, can't remember which artist it was now, it was the, the artist that did the Statue of David and they were asking him how he, he does his, you know, does he envision him, does he draw him out or whatever? And he goes, when I, when I get a, a block of marble, I, I see it already there. It's just a matter of chiseling away the excess. And I think for songwriters, sometimes, at least for me, that's the way it feels too. The song seems to be there. I'm just kind of, pushing stuff aside a little bit to get a clearer view of it. And, and that's how it, that's the best way I can kind of describe it. Cool. Um, I think you're finishing up a tour now. Um, what's the future of touring plans hold for you? Well, summer's coming on. So we're, we go out and do a bunch of shows, play a lot of festivals outdoors for people. I like when we get to go to small towns and just play for people. Sometimes we get shows where you just get to go out in a park and play. And a lot of people don't even know your music, but our music is kind of this universal simple way that they can grab onto it pretty easily. And, and it's, I really love doing that. So we'll be doing shows through the rest of the year. And, uh, you know, I take it one year at a time. We'll see what we're doing next year when that comes. Good. Yeah. I'll come out and see you. I missed you when you came to New York city, but when you come to New Jersey, I'll come out and check you guys out. Yeah, you should. It's a lot of fun. The show is, you know, we do a lot of the old classic stuff and then we do some of the new stuff and you know, we try to find a good balance. But um, at the end of the show, people seem to feel pretty good. And that's that's my goal is that we all walk out of the room feeling something positive, feel good about life. <clears throat> Great. Well, I just want to thank you for your time. It was a really fascinating interview and very insightful. So thank you and I appreciate it. And I'll hope to see you soon. Thank you so much. I appreciate it to, um, you know, getting the word out about the new music and everything that helps us a lot. So I appreciate your time as well. My pleasure. But have a good day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Heavy metal rock. Oh, my.